That's a very good question. Um, I think the I knew that I was good. I knew that I was good for my height. I knew that I was um, good for the competition that I had uh, to playing against these other people in the playground. But my skills really started developing in high school. That's where I went to another level. And uh, I knew my dad told me about um, the league, the PBA, you know. Um, and then my junior year in high school, I went down into the Philippines. Uh, I was about 17, I think, or 18 years old. And mm -hmm. I saw a PBA game. And mm -hmm. I told myself, man, I can, I can play in this league. There, yeah. No doubt about it. I can play in this league. You know, so I finish, I finish my, I come back, um, 1995, uh, sorry, 1996. I finished my senior year in high school. I graduated in June. Uh, and then July, a week later after I graduated, um, well, I threw a big party first before I left with, with my friends. Yeah. Um, so after that, I, I flew to the Philippines. I started playing basketball. I started going to school. Mm -hmm. um, I just knew that I, was, I could play in the Philippines. I was very confident in myself. I was confident because I put in a lot of work, and that's what gave me the confidence. Uh, I, was a very, I was a skilled player, but my skills evolved even further once I came to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, I really improved a lot, especially, um, you know, my coaches were John Chico, Ron Jacobs, yeah. uh, my, my first two years. And then when Coach Franz Pumarin and Coach Derek Pumarin mm -hmm. took over, you know, Coach Franz, man, he really put me on a different level. He put me above uh, and beyond of what I was capable of doing. Mm -hmm. So, man. That was that was just amazing, you know what he did. He came in there. He came in there. He was confident, you know. He, he this is this guy, man. I tell you, you know, he comes in his first year, right? And he was just confident, and he knew that we were gonna win, mm -hmm. but he gave us a hard time, you know. So and um, his, I'm not gonna say his arrogance. It was never mm -hmm. arrogance. He was always confident because he knew the formula to success. He, he made sure that each individual, their strength was highlighted and their weakness, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> we, we, he, they, they hid the weaknesses of the players. So it seemed like we were very, very strong. Um, the defense that we displayed was just was just a turning point in in the UAAP, not just mm -hmm. for LaSalle. It, it, this was a turning point. This defense that we had was a turning point uh, for collegiate programs for the UAAP. So um, you know the defense that he brought uh, until until today, people still emulate the the system that Coach France has. And it wasn't until I started coaching in 20, I started 2015, I believe, 2016. Yeah. I he took me as an assistant coach. My goodness. I saw, I saw, um, I saw the genius in him of how, how he would break down things. Uh, I, I saw how he was very methodical you could tell that he knows the UAAP, right? Mm -hmm. You know he's confident with the UAAP. When it comes to UAAP, mm -hmm. that's Coach France. Uh, you know, he, it's, he's very confident in, in that, and he knows how to get the best out of players. So, And he's got the program uh, to get the best out of players. Plus, he's got the accolades. He's got the championships, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, Coach France, uh, what they call us the Pumarin Press. That's been a that's been a changing defense for the entire UA UAAP. You know, mm -hmm. even even the coaches the coaches now they they try to emulate 
our our defense. You know, I, I, I see some of these coaches trying to do the Pumarin defense, but there's a lot more to it, you know. There's a lot mm-hmm. more things that these guys don't know. And being under Coach Franz Pumarin, I saw – I saw so much of it and I was like, Oh my God, this is, I, I didn't even know this, you know, mm-hmm. we're, and we're talking about the, the little details, right? The little details yeah. on how to read anticipation, mm-hmm. uh, bluffing and, and things like that. So um, it's amazing to me how he, like, say for example, you have a sous chef, right? A sous chef has, is in charge of this department in cooking. So you have about, you know, you got five sous chefs making their own departments, making their own slices and, and, and cooking whatever. And then here's coach friends putting it all together. <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's crazy how, um, uh, how he does things, you know, the, the, the genius uh, at work. I saw mm-hmm. the genius at work. You know, so it's it's amazing. I tell you, it's hard to explain. You'd have to really be there 